Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Humans are error prone and biased, but that doesn't mean that algorithms are necessarily better. Big tech algorithms are making important decisions in your daily life from controlling which political advertisements you see to controlling where you can live. Did you know that if you're black or Latino, the mortgage rates are likely to be higher because algorithms are not being used to calculate lending rates. And a lot of these algorithms have racial biases. A UC Berkeley study found that algorithms are even screening applicants for dream jobs. YouTube's own algorithms are being accused of being racist and playing favoritism. Now, this was levied by gamer Corey Kenshin. YouTube. You guys either play favorites, you are racist, or it's a mix of the two. On August 24th, Corey's video went viral, and he accused the billion dollar platform of racism and favoritism. These explosive allegations led to top tier creators from Jack Septicai to Philip DeFranco debating on how algorithms are unfair to people of color, mainly blacks. Hello and welcome to Lovely Tea TV. Everyone is talking about Corey's latest video. Now, if you guys don't know who Corey Kenshin is, he has over 14 million subscribers and he recently posted a viral video outlining his grievances against this Google owned company child. Never in a million years, he says, did I think I would upload a video like this, but here we are. The situation began when he uploaded a video of himself playing a horror video game called Mortuary Assistant on August 18th. Later that day, Corey reveals that the video got age restricted for seemingly no reason. He also pointed out that other YouTubers, including Markiplier, one of the top gaming channels, did not get targeted by this algorithm. When you get an age restriction on YouTube, that means that viewers must be signed in and verify that they are over the age of 18. Corey says that YouTube did not explain why. He challenged their decision, but YouTube basically confirmed in an email that his video violated community guidelines. Corey then decided to reach out to his partner manager. And so he talked to the partner manager and then Corey went to the platform and he started literally checking every single mortuary assistant video and nobody else's was age restricted. Corey appealed the decision later on that day, but a human reviewer doubled down on the age restriction. After that, Corey found a video of Markiplier using the same scene and his video was not age restricted. So he sent that over to his partner manager and the partner manager ended up sending that over to the YouTube team. And lo and behold, all of a sudden the age restriction comes off. But then what was so crazy is that four days later, Corey's age restriction came back along with them also age restricting Markiplier's video. So he feels like at this point in time, YouTube has been caught with their pants down and he was just really upset because again, who has ever seen a video get age restricted, de-age restricted, and then age restricted again? That just doesn't happen. So I go to Markiplier's Mortuary Assistant part three and he had the same situation going on and his video wasn't age restricted. So I send the video to my YouTube rep. I say, hey, um, Markiplier has this situation in his video but his isn't age restricted. Could you send that to the policy team and see what they say about that? He said, wow, Corey, uh, that's some astute detective work. Let me uh, send this to them and see what they say. What do you think happened after that? I'll give you a second. They came back and they removed my age restriction. They took it off. After they already rejected my appeal, I sent them the clip of Markiplier's video that has the same thing and they removed it. Now my YouTube rep, he was excited. He was, oh great, this is awesome. Look Corey, they took the age restriction off. I said, why? I expected them to triple down and give Markiplier an age restriction too. But they looked at Mark's video and they used that to verify my innocence. So I send my YouTube rep a lengthy 
email detailing my feelings about the, the entire situation, feeling like there was some favoritism at play. There was either that or some racism at play and that I would like to sit down with the policy team and figure out why my video was flagged in the first place. Actually, number one, was it automated or was it a human that age restricted in in the first place? Number two, who was the human reviewer? Because it's a human reviewer. Once you send submit an appeal, who was the human reviewer that doubled down and rejected my appeal? Number three, why did it take Markiplier's clip in order for them to reverse the decision? My YouTube rep gets back with me. He wants to hop on a call. We get on the phone um, for about 10, 15 minutes and I tell him, I've been feeling like this for a long time. I've been feeling like Every single time that I come back to YouTube, I'm number one trending for a few days and then they find some arbitrary issue. They nitpick and they try and find something that they can incriminate me for and try to push me down. So the controversy got worse when the video that he made addressing the racism on YouTube was taken down within minutes of him uploading it. According to a pinned comment from Corey's video, it says this. This video was immediately flagged for ab stability. I wonder why. Surely isn't because YouTube is being shown in a poor light. Surely not. So people knew what it was. You know, people definitely felt a way about the fact that he's addressing the racism on YouTube and all of a sudden the video goes down. But because he has millions of followers, they started tweeting at YouTube and going off. So then YouTube allowed the video to, you know, be shown and pushed through the algorithm. And it ended up number one trending on YouTube. Now, the interesting thing about Corey is that Corey is extremely family friendly, honey. He does not cuss in his videos. His games tend to be family friendly. He's very funny. He's been working on his content for like the past 10 years. He worked hard to build his channel. And it's very interesting how they treat him compared to some other gamers who are off the chain and curse and, you know, act a fool and they get pushed through the algorithm. They don't get age restricted. It's always something. So at this point, Corey feels like, why is my channel always under scrutiny? He didn't know who rejected the first submission that he submitted trying to get an appeal. But the fact that a human being saw the second one and they doubled down says a lot. Now let's keep it real. Racism can be hard to prove, but evidence of YouTube's favoritism is so easy to find. In response to Corey's video, another content creator named Ludwig Agern called the favor YouTube's open secret. And he also showed that he's seen double standards. Is that YouTube does play favorites. They do. And I think I'm probably on the side where I get some of the favoritism some, uh, sometimes. And I signed an exclusive contract with YouTube. It stands for them to benefit if I succeed. So they probably play a little favoritism. Maybe that's why the yard wasn't getting demonetized. So Corey then goes on to say, how does one expressively prove that somebody may be racist unless they're spamming the N word within the chat? He admits that he can't 100% prove that YouTube is racist or their algorithms. But a lot of the things that he's experienced over the years have led him to this conclusion. So is YouTube racist? Well, let's talk about it. Now, if you guys don't know, after this video got so much traction, Markiplier, like I said, who's a huge YouTube gamer, he decided to upload videos with adult themes to prove if Corey's allegations of favoritism were correct. Now, days after Corey accused YouTube of playing favorites and being racist, Mark uploaded this video to test out the theory. As of me recording this video right now, the video is up on Mark's page. There's no age restriction. It features a whole bunch of nudity, sexual content, and everything else. And YouTube has not age restricted it. They haven't given him a strike. Nothing has happened. And it's been on his channel for over 20 hours. So kudos to Mark for putting his channel at risk because they really could come and hit him with a strike. So the fact that he's willing to stand next to Corey and put his channel at risk, it says a lot about Mark. But this is very disturbing. And especially for black content creators, I myself have been going through this for years on my channel. I've talked about this, you know, relentlessly. They have age restricted videos of mine that made no sense. When we were talking about the whole live stream podcast that I did in Atlanta, we had the Zoom meeting. People were so happy. They were speaking well about the event. YouTube decided to age restrict it. And when I went to appeal it, 
I kid you not, that appeal came back denied within not even two minutes. Literally, I submitted it. It was denied two minutes later. There's no way that they sat and watched that whole two hour live stream of positivity. You know, it's really sad, but this is the world that we're living in. We are dealing more with AIs and AI biases than we are even dealing with human beings. So I leave this question to you guys. How do you guys feel about this entire situation concerning Corey? Do you guys believe that there is racism and favoritism on this platform? Not just on YouTube, but on other platforms as well. TikTok has been called out. Instagram has been called out. There's definitely a bias towards people with either Eurocentric names, Eurocentric features, Eurocentric voices. Anything that the algorithm can determine is attached to a person of color automatically just gets shadow banned and, and restricted. You know, I can talk about the same topics as a lot of these white tea channels. My views will never get over 100,000 on the same topic. I can be the first one to hit on that topic. It will stay at 100,000 views. But then a lot of these faceless white channels with white voices, they can hit on the same topics. They're getting 1.6 million views, 2 million views in a week. So there's definitely a bias here. And I'm really glad like people like Jack Septicai, Philip DeFranco, Markiplier, and many others are standing with people of color because this needs to be discussed. You know, we get punished on this site far too much and for the littlest things we're in trouble for. We're not allowed to talk about things that affect the black community because it ends up, you know, triggering the algorithm. We have to talk in code. It's just starting to be a bit much. And now when you have somebody who does not even curse, they have a family friendly channel and they're being age restricted. At that point in time, you have to see that there's some type of bias and favoritism in this ecosystem that we call YouTube. Let me know your thoughts on this entire video. Go ahead and leave a comment. Please don't forget to share the video. Make sure you thumbs up the video. And last but not least, make sure you're still subscribed because YouTube's algorithm loves to unsubscribe people from this black channel. Okay? I will talk to y'all later. Deuces. You want the latest news in the streets? Join us, sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.